and well, this is going to be an interactive experience. Judo. We're going to give you tools, information that you can use in the real world. We want you to screenshot stuff. We want you to invite people into this conversation. Uh, because and lock your way so we can break about the founder of a I bunch of not-for-profit organizations. I'm also a TV host. But the most important thing I can tell you about myself right now, I am a black man in America in 2020. And that's America a lot. And I'm raising two black boys uh, in the United States of America. And I think we're at a moment where we can actually have a conversation about what that actually means. You know, black culture is, 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 is celebrated. Uh, black culture is beloved. The black experience that gives rise to that culture, I think is, is often disrespected, is dismissed, is minimized, or it's just not well understood. But I think we are now at a moment where there's a shift. We, we're gonna have an extraordinary experience together today. Yes, possibly, we're gonna do this town hall. Uh, it's called We the People. And what we want you to understand is we aren't just talking to talk. We want to talk so you can take action. And well, this is going to be an interactive experience. We're going to give you tools, information that you can use in the real world. We want you to screenshot stuff. We want you to invite people into this conversation. Uh, because that's really, I think, what's needed. We need a bigger conversation. We're going to use you know, uh, For me, uh, black lives have always mattered. That's not new. Black lives me, matter from the beginning of time. Time. What's new is the willingness of people to talk about it. And we have an opportunity to uh, amplify the discussion and to move things forward, especially today. This town hall we're doing, We the People, is going to have some of the biggest voices for change uh, in the country, all in the palm of your hand, uh, including Killer Mike, uh, who is just a legend in my mind, uh, Jamel Hill, is going to be here. We're also going to hear from Elaine Welteroff. Now, she's an author, but she's already made history. And she's made history because uh, in the history of Condé Nast, with all the magazines they own and control, only two people have ever been named editor-in-chief, and she is one of them. So please welcome to this conversation, Elaine Welteroff. Look, I am so happy that I get a chance to have this conversation uh, with Elaine. I mean, this sister is just bad. She's bad. She's a New York, a New York Times bestselling author, award-winning journalist. She's been a judge on the new Project Runway. Uh, I mean, she messed with Michelle Obama. She, I mean, this is she's just bad. So um, I want to talk to you about this moment. It's just been such a mix of, of inspiring protests and, and, and killings and stuff like that. Talk to us about your range of emotion over this past period of what, what I call this great awakening around justice. It's been really, oh, Ciro, rotto il cazzo, it's been fermo. really emotional. Um, you know, no, this no, is not just the black people in America, right? We have no, been thinking, rompe, um, ma... for a long time around these same kinds of senseless murders. I wrote about, you know, Philando Castile's murder um which really represents in my book um crazy and i wrote about it from the perspective of being one of very few black people in the office at the time when i was so devastated so it, it was so hard to get out of bed that morning let alone proceed as business as usual and i, I wrote about what it was like coming into the office that day expecting or anticipating that other people might be feeling some of what i was feeling just as humans, as, you know, feeling, thinking humans and feeling um, like everyone was able to move on like business as usual. It feels so relevant once again now, thinking, you know, four years later, here we are again, but the difference is that the response from um, the rest of the community, folks who are non-Black, um, are, are finally seeing this moment as a wake-up call to get off the sidelines and to get involved and invested in this fight for justice. So I, I can say that since being in the streets and 
attending a number of protests, there is something different in the air at this time. There are a lot of emotions I think we're all moving through um, or trying to move through to get towards the, to the collective action that we all need to take. There is so much work for all of us. So I think we're all feeling that pressure. We're feeling that weight. Um, but I think we're also feeling empowered that this, can, this, this time has to be different. It has to be different. You, you've been on this. I mean, you really have been uh, uh, not just an inspiration, uh, but you've been offering really education to a whole new generation uh, through Teen Vogue. And, and you were doing it when it was, now it's trendy, now it's popular, mm -hmm. but you were doing it when it wasn't trendy, when it was kind of shocking to see Teen Vogue kicking on these issues. Why did you make that choice? Because you're saying other people now are going to have to make similar choices to be a little bit more brave and bold, but you were doing it when it wasn't cool. Why? And, and talk about that. By speaking just about fashion, um, we were ignoring the range of interests that were central to them, um, the, the issues that mattered to them in the world. And, and so we made sure that we were creating more of an intersectional feminist sì, ma la banana ricorda da che si mette davanti. Si va più avanti, quelli che mettono in sicurezza a me sono ricordati, Dio buono, guardali. Lollo Polo, raga, non mi seguite, mettetevi a fianco a me. Questo qua ha rotto il cazzo, questo qua davanti, Dio buono. Rotti i coglioni. Che bimbi minchia. Tanto vedo comunque lo schermo, coglione, non te ti metti dietro. Guarda, guarda, Laura è proprio scherzata, sta girando la visuale. Non dico scherzata, ma c'era un'uncertità su come si potrebbe andare, ma sapevamo che dovevamo fare le cose giuste e pensavamo che dovevamo essere parte della parte giusta della storia. E sono molto orgogliosa di dire che lo siamo, lo siamo, lo siamo, e sono molto orgogliosa del team che sta guidando la charge oggi. Ma sei giusto in che penso che molte imprese stanno ora confrontando questo reckoning di cosa significa ora, come significa ora per la comunità. How do we mean more to our community? How do we right size to make sure that we're meeting this allora, moment and that mm -hmm. we are on the right side of the street and that we are better serving our community and our, our audience, our consumers. Well, let, let's talk about that, though, because you can actually give some advice to people who are working at these brands, whether they're at the top or whether they're the intern. Uh, you know, these brands are going to now have to do some of what you've already done. I mean, you're, when you're a pioneer, that means you, you've been there, done that. What, what do these brands need to do? to get relevant and to catch up with this moment. So there's three steps I would say that every any individual brand or corporation can follow. First of all, you have to take inventory of where you are. You can't be a part of a solution if you don't recognize how you are part of the problem. Um, oh, you better preach. So oh, can you say that one more time? Just preach. <laughs> okay. I think like nobody wants to say they're racist. Nobody wants to. I, I raise their hand and say, I haven't done my part here, or I recognize that I, I could do better. And, and, and so okay. it's, I think, important to just acknowledge what, what, what part you play, what part have you been playing in this and take inventory. What does the complexion of your newsroom look like? Who's in your boardroom? Who has those board seats? And let's look at every, every level of ma management all the way down to the, in, you know, the intern level. Take an honest assessment of where we are. And I don't mean just looking at your campaigns. And so we have mm -hmm. to push ourselves to go further. And so that's part of step one that's is step taking one. step mm -hmm. two, take ownership, acknowledging wow. where you need to change, where you need to do better. And then the third step is take action, do better, mm -hmm. commit do better. to being a part of solutions that are going to move us from where we are to a better, more equitable future. So for example, uh, oh, Sephora hey, said oh, they're going to give 15% of their shelf space to black owned brands. Now, I think to me, that's a lot. Um, I mean, how, does that strike you as too much, too little? I mean, how, what, is, is that when you talk about taking action, is, is that the kind of action or what kind of, of action might really meet the moment? Is there something I can do with my contacts, with my experience, with my skill set? What can I uniquely do? I hope everyone's asking themselves that question. Um, mm -hmm. And one of my very close friends, Aurora James, and I were having a conversation when all the protests were kicking off about what we want to see from companies, because we were starting to see all the, you know, the we stand with the black community and Black Lives Matter was starting to come from companies that we we're just like, how really? in the world is this? <laughs> 
made by this corporation when they have zero black people in their executive leadership team. Something's not adding up. And so what we sat there and we thought about what is it that what is our ask to yeah, bring? So Cora James, lobby, who is e my dear friend, lobby. and she is a, a, a black business owner. She's a successful accessories designer. She and I spoke and she decided that she was going to say, I want to start something. And this yeah. is what this is what this is the kind of the origin story for for what became the 15% pledge. And now the gotcha. 15% pledge which Aurora James founded and I'm working with her on it's it's saying to corporations, specifically big box retailers, you need to go beyond making a statement to stand in solidarity with the black community. You need to go beyond even um, a one-time donation. What we are asking for is 15% of your shelf space to be dedicated to supporting black businesses, black owned businesses. That is a That's big the video. Ask. They training officers, the killers, then shooting protesters with these rubber bullets. They regular people, I know that they feel it. These scars too deep, they heal us. What happened to COVID? Nobody remember it, ain't making sense. I'm just here to vent. It happened to one of your people, it's different. We get it, the system is wicked, just learn how to pick it. Knowledge is power, I swear I'm a witness. I know that I'm gifted, I won't go too deep, cause I'm scared they'll get me. Ain't scared to admit it. Somebody I can't mention it's people who can. Well, here's the chance. I won't take the stand, but I'll take a stand for what I believe. Must not be breathing the air that I breathe. You know that the way that I bleed, you can be. I never been a fan of police, but my neighborhood. No, I try to keep peace, so it's only right that I get in the streets. March for a reason, I just on GP. How people die for us to be free. Get up for you, me. This was a dream. Now we got the power that we need to have. They don't want us with it, and that's why they mad. Yeah. It's bigger than black and white. It's a problem with the whole way of life. It can't change overnight. But we gotta start somewhere. Might as well go ahead and start here. We didn't have a hell of a year. I'ma make it count why I'm here. God is the only man I fear. It's bigger than black and white. It's a problem with the whole way of life. It can't change overnight. But we gotta start somewhere. Might as well go ahead and start here. We didn't have a hell of a year. I'ma make it count why I'm here. God is the only man I fear. Uh, Elaine Welteroth, Killer Mike, Jamel Hill. Make sure you visit 50percentpledge.org to learn more about the power of money. Also visit my organization, reformalliance.com. We're trying to make a change. Let's be about it, not just talk about it. I'm Van Jones. I'm not so afraid to let go You decide if you're ever gonna let me know Yeah, suicide if you ever try to let go uh, I'm sad and